Hello, art parents! Welcome to February. Happy Valentine's Day. Um, I'm really excited for our artists this month. Faith Ringgold is not only a vibrant, phenomenal artist, but she was also a very influential person during the Civil Rights Movement. So that is a great artist for our students to study. Um, here is a picture of Faith. She was born in 1930 in Harlem. Um, her mother was a seamstress, so you can you can probably imagine that she grew up in a household influenced by arts or at least crafting. Her mother was super supportive and actually helped work on her first few um, first few quilts until she passed away. Um, so Faith Ringgold went to school, graduated from college, and got her master's at City College in New York, and then taught school and began. Well, I mean, probably not began, but was painting on canvas. And then her works moved towards the story quilts. And the story quilts are um, pictures that are painted in acrylic on canvas, but then quilted in with other fabrics. And as you can see, she's got text to tell the stories in here. And then these big borders are inspired by Tibetan tangas, which is kind of fun and unique. Here is the first one that she showed, Who's Afraid of Aunt Jemima? Um, so these, so, you know, in this she takes like Aunt Jemima, the syrup bottle Aunt Jemima, and turns her into a businesswoman, makes her, empowers her. You can see she was definitely a very important person in that civil rights movement. She founded the group Where We At, which was, um, the aim of Where We At was to, to help artists that were African American and women get shown in museums around New York, and then, of course, I'm sure that spread across the country. So you can tell she was definitely an influential person. I want you to point out to the kids um, kind of the, the different feel of her work. I mean, compare it to, let's see, to Monet that we talked about in December, and how it's more of an everyday life. It's, you know, life in the city, dinner on the rooftop, telling stories, they're they're vibrant and interesting but it's definitely a different feel than fine art has been a lot of times that we look at and i love that about faith ringgold i love that she not only worked for the rights of women and african americans but she also really you know was doing something new changing the shape of art and bringing in this um this feel of crafting into fine art and that kind of is a newer theme that's new to this um, this generation that we live in now and that's I think a wonderful thing um luckily Faith Ringgold is also she also has other media which is great so she paints on canvas she's got her story quilts which is her primary media and then she also makes um, African masks and these impressive dolls, lifelike dolls. Well, no, not lifelike, but sewn dolls that were meant to look like people that she uses in her um, performance art. So she's a performance artist. And then she's taken her story quilts and turned those into, into children's books. She has several children's books. And I'm going to get those hopefully tomorrow at the library and have them in the cart. So if you have time, I think it would be wonderful to read one or two of those books with your students. Maybe younger grades, instead of focusing on these prints that I printed out, we go, you go ahead and take a look, run through one of those books. I will tell you, I think this is a little bit more time intensive project. I think that the students will want to take their time with it. I know when I was putting together the, um, the example piece, it took me about an hour and a half. It was just hard not to spend time on these little details. It's really fun. But let me show you how I ran through that. So we're going to start with a piece of cardstock. Um, we're drawing with pencil. And this time, go ahead and encourage the kids to put in detail. That's no problem. Because then we're going to add in crayon, where Faith would use acrylic paint. We're using crayon. Um, and then on top of that, I've added in some fabric details. And I didn't want to take a ton because of course we want the fabric for the kids. So, um, but I've got, you know, a little cat and a butterfly and our flowers are fabric. And you can see I've worked in my text on the clouds to make it kind of interesting. I would encourage the kids to do maybe a memory. I think that would be a really meaningful piece of art for them. Or um, I've done a story here. I did um, Mary, Mary, Quite Contrary. So that's what I've got in on my clouds. And then I kind of made my own tangle-like border. Um, it's Again, you don't want them to get too, 
encourage detail. And if you can work with your teachers to have time, then fabulous. That's wonderful. Let them go crazy with it. But you don't want to get too caught up in little details or they're not going to have time to finish, which also would be okay if they want to take pieces home and glue it at home. Of course, that's fine. I, I don't want to discourage them from doing good art. That's that's crazy. <laughs> so, so you can kind of see how we're, how we're working here. It's an easy project for sure. I've got a box of fabric scraps and I would say with the kids, I mean, I've cut everything into kind of squares about this size. There's a wide variety. I've got more in the art room. If you run out when you're there, um, I try and keep all of the supplies that you might need behind the door. So as you go into the room with the laminator, it's just right behind the door there. So if you run out and you're there, by all means, run down and grab it. Or if you're getting low, shoot me a text and I'll come make sure, you know, they'll need to be cut up again. But even as your kids are working and they have little scraps, go ahead and have these, have them stick these back in because these are about the perfect size to work on a picture. So somebody else might want to use them. Just, you know, tell them we can reuse that fabric. Um, and then along those same lines, go ahead and, and ask your teachers. Just say it's a little bit bigger project. We definitely want an hour for this if we can. I know with the younger grades, sometimes it's hard to get a full hour and kindergarten. That's practically impossible. And that is totally okay. I mean, do what you can. And those younger grades, they're not going to get as detailed. So that'll probably work out just fine. But tell your teachers, if you can have a full hour, fantastic. If they're willing to give you a little bit more, Wonderful. Mrs. Drown knows that I love to talk about art with the kids. She always gives me like an hour and 15, which is so nice. <laughs> she knows I just go on and on. You guys probably know that too by now. Um, but just to give you an idea, so when we're gluing the fabric on, um, I tried both ways. You can definitely put the fabric on the glue stick and do that, but it's kind of, it gets a little sticky. Your fingers get sticky. I found the easiest way is just to go back and forth about four times so you can see um, about how much we have here and then and then put the piece of fabric on over the top and I don't know what it is about kids and glue sticks but it seems like there is just very little middle ground with how much glue they put on the paper you've got the kids that hardly put anything and then you've got the kids that you can like for the love of Pete that's enough and um, so yeah just just go ahead and demonstrate, just show them. You know, we're just gonna go back and forth, one, two, three, four times, perfect, stick the fabric on. And it'll be nice and secure on there. You'll have plenty to keep it on there, but you're not like gonna have glue oozing out of your fabric, which that's kind of gross. Um, so I hope you enjoy this project. Let me know if you have any questions. Of course, I'm always here to help out. I'm happy to have you email me or text me. I try and get right back to you um, and, and call me. You're welcome to call me. Um, and I hope you have a wonderful February. Enjoy this great project. Thanks so much.